Pow, welcome back to the channel, Dan Who Reviews. My name is, of course, Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram. Today, our Marvel Legends reviews continue with this Dr. Carl Lycos, aka Sauron Builder Figure Wave. And uh, in front of me, we have Bishop. I uh, really like Bishop the character. Haven't got him in figure form, so I'm excited to open this figure. Of course, X-Men, the X-Men logo at the top, as he's not really associated much with Deadpool, much more so with X-Men. And uh, yeah, he doesn't come with much apart from a gun, which we've probably seen before. And then of course, the massive builder figure piece for Sauron. So let's have a look at the box. You get a picture of Bishop from the comics on the back. You get a little write up. And then of course, you get a list of all the figures in this wave. You need to complete the Sauron builder figure. Today we're reviewing Bishop. So as I said, it's another character to add to my X-Men universe on the shelf and another character that I actually want. So, uh, and he looks good. So let's open him up and have a closer look. Here we have Bishop out of the box. And to be fair, he looks straight from a comic page. I really like this look for Bishop. He's had a few different costumes in the comics, but if I was gonna pick one, then this would definitely be one of them. Uh, very much reminds me of how he looks uh, in the early 90s and of course the animated show where I first fell in love with the X-Men. He looks very good and I didn't even notice that he has like a bag for his gun which is again comic accurate but I didn't know that so now we know where his gun goes. There's his accessory for his gun and in it goes. There you go. So he has a bag, a futuristic man bag for his gun um, but that looks pretty good and he's got a trigger finger on both hands as well. So obviously he's from the future, similar to Cable. He comes back in time, he joins the X-Men, knew him as legends. And uh, yeah, he's got, he used to have a metal arm as well, I believe in the comics, if I could be wrong. He works for Xavier's security enforcers, I believe. Uh, I like the M on his face that sort of represents that he's a mutant. Um, he can absorb powers. And uh, yeah, really like this. Does his harness come off? Okay, yeah, it does. Okay, so you can take the harness off for Bishop. So there you go, there's his harness with his little bag for his gun. I'm guessing you can take the neckerchief off as well. Yes, you can. Knocking things off. So yeah, you can, uh, can you take his belt off? No, the belt seems to be on there. Um, but yeah, so you can sort of take a few things off. I'm not very good at get playing the gas the body mold game, but I'm suppose it's the Hyperion. Maybe the Grim Reaper body mold. You let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm pretty crap at that game. But um, that would be my guess. Let's put his harness back on. Um, let's put his neckerchief back on. So yeah, I, really, I like the character. I like the character. I never had him in figure form. And now I've got him. And straight away, you can tell from a distance who this guy is meant to be. Looks very good. So here's a closer look at the head sculpt for Bishop. As I said, I really like it. I like the whited out eyes, his little goatee, the M over his eye. And then of course his futuristic mullet uh, that goes all the way around the back. But he can still look up a tiny bit. Not much though. Looks down more than he looks up. But yeah, looks very good. And then the paintwork is clean throughout. You've got the uh, little logos on the side, which is I assume from the Xavier uh, security enforcement team. That's what those logos stand for. Uh, but other than that, the paint works quite simple, just the blue and yellow. Um, maybe another layer of yellow would have went good over the blue. Um, but other than that, it still looks nice. And there's nothing more on the back, really. Um, but still, doesn't need much detail as it does look very comic accurate. Uh, let's get him holding his gun. And as I said, the gun is the only accessory he comes with. He is known for having futuristic guns in the comics as well. So maybe you could borrow some of Cable's. Um, but yeah. Oh, okay, so this piece on his on his uh, upper arm is a separate piece as well. So that will be a little bit fiddly, but it's fine. Same there, look. You've got to sort of line it up so it looks like it's the bottom of the t-shirt. Might want to glue them down as it shouldn't affect articulation really. But um, yeah, he's got the whited out eyes, with the little goatee. Um, yeah, looks good, looks good. Now I haven't even mentioned, he comes with a build a figure piece because it fell on the floor for Sauron. Obviously another wing, and look how big this wing is people. Really look forward to building this guy. Just the wing itself is taller than Bishop and Bishop's not on a small mold. So yeah, obviously subscribe to the channel, uh, hit that notification bell and come back very soon for the Sauron build a figure review. So let's put that over there. And uh, yeah, this would be the prime time 
to sort of ask the question, oh, you can't, it's a shame he's got two trigger fingers and not like an open palm so he can rest his hand. Anyway, ignore me. This is the prime time to sort of ask the question for anyone who doesn't know, Bishop, who is he? This is the part of the video where we ask the question, who is he? And I try and give you a little bit of information about the character this figure is inspired by. So Bishop, who is he? Real name Lucas Bishop is a mutant from a dystopian future where he worked for Xavier's security enforcers. He travels back in time where he joins the X-Men, knowing them from the future only as legends. First appearance was in Canny X-Men 282 in November 1991. Bishop had the power to absorb energy and then release it from his body, as well as some impressive goons from the future and time travel abilities. He's been a part of many adventures in the Marvel Universe, but mainly with the X-Men. There you go, so I hope that helped. Again, I do not claim to be an expert, but it is nice to have a little bit of information about the characters these figures are inspired by. And as I said, Bishop's been through a lot in the comics. He's had different outfits, he's had different hairstyles. I know there's been a bold Bishop. Uh, so it could have been good to get some uh, interchangeable heads, some interchangeable hands, but still, it's a quite a chunky figure. As I said, it represents the comic character very well. You're gonna know who this guy is from the shelf. And I just thought I'd mention as well, do you know I said that these things at the bottom of the sleeves are fiddly, sort of like the uh, Cyclops legs, you can take them off. So you can slide these off if you wanted to, and they could stop bugging you. So then you can just see it's paint there that separates the t-shirt from the skin tone. So yeah, if you wanted to, you can take them off. If not, you can put them back on, it's all good. But um, yeah, let's compare this guy to some of the X-Men characters, shall we? So who have I got from my previous review? I've got Cyclops here. Uh, let's get him standing up. And as I mentioned, his stupid leg things that I need to glue. I just don't trust myself uh, gluing things on figures. I don't want to break and mess with the articulation. But there is Cyclops. Whoops, not the camera again. There is Colossus. It would have been good to get Colossus in his uh, original outfit, but still, they work fine for display. Who else have I got near me? I did have Rogue somewhere. Oh, there she is. She was behind me. There's Rogue. So, yeah, the X-Men team is definitely looking really good. I can't wait to open up the Tiger Stripe Wolverine and, of course, Psylocke. And hopefully soon we get a Gambit. Fingers crossed they show us a Gambit at um, San Diego Comic-Con. A man can dream. But uh, yeah, this guy's looking really good. Let's pull in Cable as well, both from the future. There you go. Cable is bigger than Bishop. But these are both quite chunky characters. Um, I've got a Deadpool near me. So as you can see, Deadpool is shorter than these two. These two tower above a Deadpool. But uh, yeah, these uh, figures are looking good. Solid wave so far. Um, I reckon this is a really solid character, nothing fancy. The paint works a little bit sloppy on the knee, but the articulation is standard Marvel Legends articulation. And I reckon this represents the character from the comics very well. It's like you put your hand in a comic and pulled out Bishop, looks very good. So I'm not complaining at all. Happy to add a new character to my personal collection. And the figures in this wave, uh, yeah, they stand out, don't they? If you have these figures on your shelf, these are gonna stand out, all very vibrant. Um, Here's the stupid X-Men Deadpool. Um, and who else is left? There's one more figure from this wave, isn't there? And I've, oh, it's Omega Red. Of course it's Omega Red. Of course it is. Omega Red definitely towers above everyone so far. So yeah, these are the figures I've reviewed from this wave so far. What are you thinking? I think we've got Lady Deadpool to go and then we can build the builder figure. And then I've still got my Madcap, <laughs> AKA Jim Carrey, the mask version of uh, Marvel Legends form. But yeah, these are looking good so far, people. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like this bishop? What do you think? Would you have preferred to have the bold bishop, a different outfit? Very interested to hear your thoughts. Do you like his man bag? Um, he hopes you do. Uh, so please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Much appreciated. And as always, people, I shall see you on the next one.